presented by the all-new Honda Civic, now available with Turbo, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by the all-new Honda Civic. Now available with Turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. Eduardo Rodriguez will make his second start of the season. He's been dealing with a knee problem. He got hurt in spring training. He's wearing a new knee brace, and he had a win in his first start. Josh Donaldson is back in the lineup after missing yesterday's game with a bruised right hand. That's great news for the Blue Jays. Donaldson will play the DH role today. Let's take a look at the rest of the lineup. Blue Jays are three games over 500. 30 wins and 27 losses. Josh Donaldson against left-handed pitching. Has torn it up this year, 17 for 52 with seven extra base hits. He'll face a left hander in Rodriguez today, and right behind him, Edwin Encarnacion. 2016 against Boston, he's hitting 311 with four home runs against the Red Sox. He had a home run here on Friday night, a two run home run. So the Blue Jays have their good lineup in against a young left handed pitcher, Eduardo Rodriguez. You mentioned he's making his second start of the season, his first here at Fenway Park. He began the season on the disabled list with right patellar subluxation. And in layman's turn, that is a partial dislocation of the kneecap. He was the 2015 Red Sox pitcher of the year when he went 10 and 6. He was also the Red Sox rookie of the year last year. In one start this year, he has thrown six innings against Baltimore and won that ball game. He's making his third start versus the division rival Toronto Blue Jays. That's tied for the most versus any club. He's got a good fastball and a very good changeup. The Blue Jays roughed him up here last year and as they faced him. Same pitching matchup we have today. Marco Estrada and Eduardo Rodriguez. That was last June 14th right here at Fenway Park. Jose Bautista will step in. Rodriguez. Throwing out of a very abbreviated windup. Here's the first pitch of the game up and away, and we are underway. Jose is one for six in the series. He's walked three times. For some reason, Chris Young, the left fielder, went over to the foul line to maybe throw something off the field. He's back in position. Ball two. Rodriguez has a very lively arm. They got him from the Baltimore Orioles for Andrew Miller and really burst onto the scene last year with those 10 wins for the Red Sox. They were looking for big things from him this year, but he got hurt in spring training. It reminded me when I heard the story of the Marcus Stroman injury. It was in spring training. They were doing pitcher fielding practice. He was working on some pop ups. He was just running. Off the field. High fly ball to the left. Young on the warning track looking up. This ball is home run. Top of the fence. That's a home run for Bautista. 
That's a no doubter. It hit right on top of that lip above the green monster, and it's a home run. The umpire is now acknowledging that fact. It came straight down and landed right on top of that ledge up above the green monster. Jose Bautista, he always seems to be good for at least one here in Fenway Park. He hadn't hit one yet in this series, and he gets this afternoon's ball game off to a good start. 23rd career home run here at Fenway Park. A first inning shot, and the Blue Jays have a 1 0 lead. As quick as you can. Home run number 12 for Bautista, RBI number 38. Josh Donaldson, we mentioned he missed yesterday's game with a bruised right hand. Upstairs. Jose, well, one more time. Rodriguez loves his fastball. He's basically a two pitch pitcher, fastball in a changeup. That time, the fastball out over the plate, right on top of the wall, and then bounces back into play. That's a home run. There's a red line that's drawn right across the top of the green monster. Anything above that is a home run. And Jose just got it over it. Donaldson fouls it into the seats out of play. Well, the Bojays, they were all in tune to the first pitch, and Marcus Stroman helping the umpires out, saying, That's a home run, man. And it hit up on that little table. There's a little bench up on top of the green monster, about 12, 15 inches wide. It hit right on top of that. One, two to Donaldson. Inside, it's even at two and two. Well, Josh has been dealing with a thumb injury, right, on that top hand. And you see where that bat is really jammed back in between his thumb and his index finger. And if you're not hitting that ball squarely, that can really jam in there and cause you a lot of problems. And it wasn't just the other day that it started bothering him. It's been about a week or so that he's been feeling the effects of that. But you know him. He wasn't going to miss too much time because of that. And he re-aggravated that injury on Friday night against David Price. Price made a couple good pitches inside and really jammed Donaldson. He's walked a couple of times. He had a two run.
talked to some of the Boston people today and they were saying, well, remember, that was because he was tipping his pitches. That was the big thing going around last year, that he was tipping his pitches and everybody knew what was coming. And Brian Goins can hit a three-run home. Get back at him right here this afternoon. Work. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. O'Brien. Here's today's Red Sox lineup. Leading off in right field, Mookie Betts. At second base, Dustin Pedroia. The shortstop, Xander Bogarts. The DH, David Ortiz. At third, Travis Shaw. At first base, Ham. Me. In center field, Jackie Bradley Jr. In left field, Chris Young. The catcher, Christian Vasquez. Very nice, Jonathan. Thank you. You too, Hanley. That was cute. Mookie hey. Betts leading things off here. Jonathan's coming after your job, OB. He didn't skip a beat when Hanley jumped in. Sure did not. Mookie hitting 289, 14 homers, 45 runs batted in, and an eight game hitting streak. Red Sox and Toronto, six apiece in the season series. You know, they talk about the ace of the staff being Stroman yesterday. I don't think so. This <laughs> is the ace of their staff, Estrada. He's been lights out this year. You see the three and two record, but the ERA, boy, he's had, should have a much better record. When he hit a buck 77 off of him. A very, very tough to hit. He hasn't allowed more than eight hits in any of his 10 starts. Though the season high of eight came in a loss to the Red Sox here at Fenway on April 16th, four to two. He's got a three and two on Mookie. Who flares that one down the line but slices it foul. Let's go back to Jonathan and Hanley a moment ago. After he was done. A big old bear hug. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan kind of disappeared in there. And up high for ball four. 
The Blue Jays defense brought to you by DraftKings. They are sixth in the American League with 31 errors in 57 games. Around the infield third to first, Matt Dominguez at third. Barney is short, Travis at second, and Carnacion at first. In the outfield, Michael Saunders, Kevin Pilar, Jose Batista behind the plate, Russell Martin catching Estrada. So bets aboard, Pedroia the batter, he's been red hot, a 12 game hitting streak for Dustin. And after going one for three with a double on Saturday, is now hit safely in 25 in a row against Toronto. And only Jerry Remy has a longer hitting streak against the Blue Jays at 26. And the Red Sox are running wild this year, huh? 38 out of 43 stolen bags. I mean, that percentage is through the roof, and you see he hasn't been thrown out. Bogarts on deck, 1 0 Toronto on the Bautista solo homer. Outside. Time now to see who's been driving the ball. Presented by Toyo Tires. Pedroia 12 in a row, hitting 392, including six doubles, six RBIs in the streak. Toyo Tires, the official tire of the Boston Red Sox. Now you're going to steal your bases off of Russell Martin here. You try to figure out the times, but Mookie should be running. Martin has not thrown anybody out this year. He's just not getting it done. Not running and foul back. Now he used to be a pretty good catch and throw guy, but this season, and it has a lot to do with your pitching staff and how well they get you the ball, but he's throwing base runners out at a percentage of 12%. That's not good. Mookie Estrada, checking it out. <laughs> Estrada was very, very tough against the Red Sox in Toronto. He's not running, and that's pop foul out of play. Back in April, a 3 0 victory, and he allowed only five hits in seven innings. He was really tough. And it's that changeup. Everybody thinks just fastball changeup, but he's come up with a little cutter that's helped him with right handed hitters. He'll throw a little curveball to left handers occasionally, but he's really known for that changeup. He's got tremendous arm speed on his changeup. That's the, that's the cutter right there. Cold hard facts brought to you by clean Chris Coors Light entering each day since May 3rd. The Red Sox have had at least a share of the longest active hitting streak in the majors. So that's going going on for longer than a month. Jackie Bradley 29 Chris Bogarts 26 and Ortiz and Pedroia right now at 12 in a row. High pop up twisting back toward the stands. Martin heading over there along with Dominguez but off into the box seats. You can't dive in the stands anymore with that screen up there. Not that he could have caught yeah. that. <laughs> you also can't give up too because we all know how that ball will blow back towards the field of play. It was more fun when you'd see a catcher jump into the first row of the seats to try to catch one. I saw Fisk go, you know, he's 6'4". I saw him go all the way fully extended and get balls. <laughs> Look at Martin climbing the wall. The 2-2. That clangs away from Martin on ball three and there's Mookie into second base and stopping there. You always got to look toward third when he's on the bases. On a play like that. So our thanks to Dave O'Brien Steve Lyons and Dennis Eckersley for providing a temporary call of this game. We have solved the audio issues on location so let's welcome back Buck Martinez and Pat Tabler. Thank you very much Jamie Campbell. We are in the bottom of the first inning full count to Dustin Pedroia. Betts goes to second on the wild pitch charge to his strong. Back to back walks from Austin to start the ball game. You know that is one thing that Marco has done really well this year. He has cut down his walks. Right now he's just pitching outside the strike zone. Last time out he had three walks and he had four against the Yankees the start before that. He says I've got to cut those down. I think he's done a good job of that. He has pitched to contact. But right now the Red Sox very patient against Marco Estrada. Estrada has had a season high four walks in four different games this season. Xander Bogarts he had his hit streak snapped on Friday night. And it made him mad. He came back on Saturday and got three <laughs> hits yesterday afternoon. 
A double two singles. He drove in a run and scored a run. He was three for four in the ball game. 82 hits already he has put up. That leads the major leagues right now. The last shortstop to lead the major leagues in hits, Derek Jeter, back in 2012 when Derek had 216. Bogarts bunts it to Estrada. They got a shot at third. Get the force out back to the first. Not in time. Good play by Marco Estrada. He got on it quickly because it was bunted right back toward the mound, and Matt Dominguez made a return throw to first, but not in time. They get the lead runner. You know, that's the thing that's really impressive about, about the Blue Jays starting pitchers. They're all athletes. Not a good attempt right here by Bogarts right back to the mound, but right away, Marco Estrada is all over that. He made up his mind that he was going over to third base. He gives a good throw to Dominguez. And to no avail back across the diamond because Bogarts runs too well. Marco Estrada helping himself out with the glove. Marco Estrada very grateful for that bunt attempt. Last time he faced Bogarts in this ballpark, Xander hit a three run home run. I'm surprised he tried to bunt in the first inning after two walks. David Ortiz. Big numbers against the Blue Jays this season. He takes a first pitch strike. Well, he saw the third baseman back, so he was trying to drop it down in front of him. But I'll tell you what, the league's leading hitter. <laughs> no, you don't. Bunt. I'm not letting him bond. No, I think he did that on his own. Strike one to David Ortiz. Pedroia at second, Bogarts at first. Now it's a one-two. Well, you talk about small things turning an inning around. That could eventually turn a game around. Estrada made a fine play to get the lead runner at third. He forced Mookie Betts on that bunt attempt. Pretty good change up there. Ortiz, we have mentioned what he has done against the Blue Jays this season a 346 average. He's 9 for 26 with five doubles. A home run in six RBIs. Hey, it's not just the Blue Jays. He's been doing that against everybody this year. If you look at the leaderboard, he's all over it in the American League. 342 average, 25 doubles, 16 homers, and 53 RBIs. 140 total bases, which leads the American League. This ball is drilled to center. Pilar got a late break. He's able to make the catch. Well, that's the toughest play for a center fielder. That line drive hit right at you. He froze for a minute to get an evaluation and then read it perfectly and runs it down. I think whenever David Ortiz steps to the plate, you've got to take a couple of steps back if you're an outfielder, and that's what Pilar does. He's playing deep to begin with. Then you're right. That line drive right over your head, you're, you're just not sure by the swing of the bat if it's going to drop in front of you or carry over your head. Pilar runs it down in center field and then gets the ball back quickly to hold the runners. This is Travis Shaw who moves up into the fifth spot against the right hander is Strata. Better inside for a ball. Shaw batting 289 for the season. But his average against the Blue Jays jumps up to 326. He's got 14 hits against the Blue Jays, five doubles, two homers, and 11 RBIs. Big numbers all the way around. Slugging percentage on base percentage. What you have to do against the Red Sox, first time through, if you pitch him one way, you might have to change your second time through, and then you might have to change your third time through. The good news for the Blue Jays is Marco Estrada can do that because he's got so many weapons to get you out. This ball ripped well, but well foul into the seats down the right side. Boy, if Marco Estrada can get out of this inning after walking the first two and then facing arguably the best hitter in baseball in Xander Bogarts. He'll dance all the way into the dugout. So will his teammates. They'll be excited about that. Try and get some more runs. He got him. Oh, what an inning for Marco Estrada. He walks Mookie Betts and Dustin Pedroia to start the inning and then makes a nice defensive play himself. Blue Jays have a one nothing.
schedule ahead brought to you by WestJet. The Blue Jays will wrap up this game against Boston and head to Detroit to take on the Tigers for the first time this season. Jay Happ against Michael Fulmer scheduled on Monday. Monday, then Aaron Sanchez and Matt Boyd, the former Blue Jay. Wednesday is an afternoon game. I Dickey will go to the mound against a free agent. Jordan Zimmerman, who will wrap things up against the Tigers. No Justin Verlander, who was pitching today, and are already in the third inning of their ball game, so they miss Verlander. But they get back into the American League East once again, seven more games against the Orioles over the next two weeks. So John Gibbons' team's going to have to keep the pedal to the metal, if you will, against these teams. It's Michael Saunders shows bunt, pulls the bat back. Michael is two for seven in this series. Batting 295 off to a great start this year. They're really starting to pound him in with that fastball. Anything out over the plate, he's been able to reach it. So now they've been going back inside with the heater. He's done that an awful lot recently. They pitch him inside almost exclusively. Well, they see all the movement that Michael has in his trigger when he's getting ready to swing the bats. And they feel if you've got a good fastball like Rodriguez does, we're going to pitch you inside. We don't want you to get that bat head extended out in front. So they've been pounding him in. Another pitch inside off the plate, two and one to Saunders. Boston has pitched Michael Tuff all season long. This is his 11th game against the Red Sox. He is six for 34, 176 average. One way to combat that. They throw it in there and yank it to right field. He had designs of that on that pitch. We're all up on it. Pitches are. Trying to stay inside the Sunders. Coming right back in there. Rodriguez has a nice little tailing fastball right at the end the ball starts to move it'll go into the left hander away from the right handers if you're disciplined enough I think at the plate if you're a left hander if you see the ball in you can take it because it's going to ride off the plate the one you want to look for is the one that starts right down the middle very good very nice inside everything bunched up down and into Saunders. Full count. Devin Travis waits on deck. He's homered in this series, his first home run of the season. You've hit against guys that pound you inside like that. It feels like every pitch is right above your fist. You yeah. can't do anything with it. We talked about Josh Donaldson's thumb getting jammed up a lot. Uh, when you start getting pitchers like that or just keep pounding you inside, you start anticipating it. You start opening up just a little bit more. Look for it one time, see how hard you can hit it. This is down the left side. It's slicing toward the seats. It is out of play. Overcast now, lightnings. The skies are lightening up a little bit. There is supposed to be no rain. At least heavy rain for most of the afternoon today. Yesterday was gorgeous, wasn't it? Just a gorgeous day. Everything but the ball game, <laughs> if you're a Blue Jay fan. Boston won that game six to four. Blue Jays managed just four hits in that ball game. Saunders hits this one high to left. Young drifting back on the warning track in front of the scoreboard. He makes the catch. And down. Home hardware and building center locations. Proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Devin Travis bats with one on. Travis has a hit in two at bats against Eduardo Rodriguez. He's just one for seven in this series. That one was a home run. Big home run. An insurance against the Red Sox on Friday night. 
He's getting closer and closer, isn't he? His timing, starting to get it at the plate. This is basically still spring training for Devin. Been in the lineup for about two weeks ever since Troy Tulowitzki went on the disabled list. It's good pitch inside. He's done a good job, Rodriguez has, of keeping the mm -hmm. ball inside. Now, spring training, the only difference is that instead of the starter leaving after two innings, you got to face him for the whole game. <laughs> and the bullpens. <laughs> you don't get a breather in the bullpen. There's not some double A kid coming up here and you're facing him in your last at bat. Hertulo today is hitting off of a tee. And he's getting close. Good news with Brett Cecil as well. He has extended his throwing out to 90 feet now. So he is getting close to working his way back to the mound. Outside two and two. Cecil, of course, a big piece that's missing out of the Blue Jays bullpen right now. And the names continue to be shuffled. Ryan Tapera was sent back to Triple A Buffalo with the addition of Matt Dominguez, who's playing third base here today. Boy, that's another good pitch right inside on. Devin Travis he pops up to the shortstop. Rodriguez done a good side good job working to both sides of the plate here. He's got one of those fastballs that are sneaky. And I think if you're a hitter you got to look to one side of the plate or the other. He's got that tailing fastball and as a right hander if he throws it inside you can't give up on it because it's got some movement on it. Kevin Pilar. He has one hit in this three game series one for eight. You know that's an interesting point you make Rodriguez throws ninety three ninety four. Yet the Blue Jays can face Greg Kimbrell at ninety nine and hit fastballs off of him because of that word you mentioned sneaky. Little extra skip on the fastball that gets another pop up off the bat of Pilar Pedroia out in the outfield grass makes the catch quick inning for Rodriguez three up three down he's retired seven straight since the home run. Flying to Boston three times daily. Go to WestJet.com to book your flight to cheer the Blue Jays on right here in Boston. WestJet, a proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. A lot of contest winners, Buck, that flew out here on WestJet, enjoying the game, wearing Blue Jay hats and jerseys, of course. It has been a great weekend for baseball fans, whether you're a fan of the Red Sox or of the Blue Jays, and the fans have had a great time. The weather has cooperated most of the weekend. I think it's been beautiful. It's been great baseball. You're in, in a kind iconic type of ballpark. Two very good teams. It's been very entertaining this weekend. Blue Jays won the opener on Friday night at five to two. Ari Dickey picking up the win. Blue Jays beat David Price in that game for just the third time in franchise history. He is 17 and three all time against the Blue Jays. This is Hanley Ramirez, the first baseman. 
Well, Marco Estrada got out of a tough first inning jam. He stranded a pair of Red Sox. He walked the first two batters and kept them off the scoreboard. Thanks to Xander Bogarts dropping down that bone attempt. When you're like that and you're just scrambling to look for an out anywhere, facing one of the best hitting teams in all of baseball, and the guy gives you an out like that, you do wonders for your confidence. Especially in this ballpark. Ramirez late on that fastball. Now Bogarts, he's got more hits than anybody since the start of last season. For some reason, thought about bunting and bunted it right back to the mound. He probably got a little visit from the manager and the hitting coach about that. Hey, we like you to swing the bat. Yeah, you're hitting 350. <laughs> no bunting, unless I tell you. And misses down and away. It's a full count. Jackie Bradley Jr. Waits on deck. Marco Estrada is making his 11th start of the season. Third time he's faced the Red Sox. And he has been tough to hit. He's held opponents to a 177 opponents batting average. That's the fourth best opponents batting average in the majors. Who says you need a 95 mile an hour fastball to get major league hitters out? To a changeup and Ramirez walks. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Busy Sunday afternoon. Roy Kluber on the mound for the Cleveland Indians and Kansas City. They've done a remarkable job of staying competitive despite the fact they've lost some very key players. Mike Mustak is out for the season for an ACL. Their catcher, Sal Perez, just getting close to coming back. They didn't disable him. Yeah, he got to play in yesterday's game, got a couple of hits. He had that leg contusion. Alex Gordon is still out. They'll figure out a way. They got that taste of winning last year. Losing a couple of regulars is that's not going to slow him down. Jackie Bradley Jr., center fielder, hitting 324. This is popped up. Matt Dominguez, the third baseman, calls for it and makes the catch. Well, this is such an iconic sports town that when one of the heroes shows up, it's a big deal. And there's no better hockey player than that man right there, the great Bobby Orr. Perfect hockey player for the Boston Bruins for so many years. He's in the ballpark today. He was down in the dugout earlier today. This is a great sports town. Oh. They love their sports heroes, don't they? Opening day, didn't uh, Bill Russell, wasn't he here? And Bobby Orr and some of the greats of all the great, the great sports iconic figures that have played here. He was the best, wasn't he? Yeah, he's a terrific player. He could do everything. I don't know a lot about hockey. Explosive, Shocker. fast, great shot. But the, the people I talk to, you know, everybody says Wayne Gretzky and, and Rocket Richard and all that. But everybody I talk to who knows a little something about hockey said <laughs> he was the best ever before he got hurt. Yeah, he played a lot. Injuries toward the end of his career. This is another pop up and it's playable. Edwin Encarnacion is there and makes the catch. Two pop outs here in the second after the lead off. Edwin kind of scratching his head right now, trying to figure out uh, the sun is now looking like it's a little bit brighter. He doesn't have any sunglasses on. And he was looking right straight up in the sky and said he lost that one. Yeah, it's a real challenge because the sun is impacting those clouds. It's very bright and hazy. Right now. Number nine hitter is the catcher, Christian Vasquez. Vasquez came into the game after Ryan Hannigan had to leave because of a neck issue. 
Hannigan after the game was placed on the disabled list and they've replaced him with Sandy Leon who just just called up from Pawtucket Triple A. Vasquez played in the opener on Friday night. He went 0 for 3 was lifted in favor of a pinch hitter in the ninth. Marco really struggling with his command right now. He has not been able to find it with any of his pitches. He's just battling right now to get through these innings. We have seen this at times just for a matter of maybe three or four batters. And he's always able to make adjustments and find the strengths that he's walked three already, including both leadoff men so far in this game. His season high and walks is four. And you can see the strike to ball ratio not where he would like it to be. Red Sox are one a very good hitting team. They're also a very patient team. And Marco's trying to be very well, trying to be perfect right right now early in this ballgame in this ballpark. I, I think pitching here in Fenway Park might have something to do with it. You make one mistake and they can knock it out of the ballpark. Ground ball. Marty will flip to second. Travis is there. The inning is over. So the leadoff walk doesn't factor in. Blue Jays have an early lead. Matt Dominguez not only got called up last night but found himself in the starting lineup today playing at third base. The reason he's at third base is Josh Donaldson's thumb is still not 100 percent. Guys it's a surprise to many that he's even in the lineup today DHing, but no surprise at all to George Poulos and Josh Donaldson himself. In fact they spent the entire game yesterday doing treatment every type of treatment. In fact George Poulos said they ambushed him with treatment to make sure that he can be back. He was getting treatment well into the evening last night to do everything he can. He said that Josh Donaldson is a warrior and will do whatever he can to play. I asked George Poulos if it was Josh Donaldson's idea to say, hey, George, do what you can to get me back in the lineup. And Poulos laughed and said, yeah, but he kind of didn't say it that nicely. <laughs> Josh was very forceful in wanting to get back in and play. Well, that's what he does. He averages about 155 games a year. He plays every day, every inning. He wants to be in the lineup. Well, some of the treatment is ice. They'll also put some of those electric stimulants in there and just try to to get that area get the blood flow working in that area to, to heal quicker. Well one thing you can do is you can't rush nature. He's got a bruised hand and it's going to take a while for it to calm down. This is Matt Dominguez in Donaldson's place at third. Dominguez played three games for the Blue Jays early on got into three different games one started third one started first. He's a natural third baseman of course and a very good one. In 46 games this season Triple A Buffalo Matt hit 287 with seven doubles five homers and 28 RBIs. Got a little bit of power. He showed that off against the Blue Jays. When he was a member of the Houston Astros. I think that caught the eye of the, of the Jays. This ball is drilled to the alley in right center, but there's Mookie Betts to run it down. 
One down. It's time to convert your big outdoor tasks into short, effortless work. Make the great outdoors even greater with Honda Power Equipment. Fenway Park has undergone some wonderful renovations. They've widened the concourse, make it easier for the fans to move around the ballpark. One out for Darwin Barney. Rodriguez has retired seven straight since the leadoff home run by Jose Bautista. Darwin's done a terrific job filling in all over the diamond. This ball's a high fly ball to left field. Young looking up. Goodbye home run. Darwin Barney. His third home run of the season. Two home runs off Rodriguez first time through the order. You know, Darwin is a smart player. Uh, whenever you talk to him, you always come away saying, wow, he, this guy really understands the game of baseball. He's really into it. He'll make adjustments if he has to. And now he's getting his chance with Tulowitzki on the disabled list to play every day. And John Gibbons is going to ride him. As long as you're swinging that hot bat, I'm going to put you in that lineup somewhere. And he helps the Blue Jays with that home run. Well, he's done a good job, whether he's playing second, short, or third. Coming up with the big hits, and Bautista goes after the first pitch, and it's a high fly into ring. Rookie Betts makes the catch two down. You know, we've seen this three times this year now where pitchers say, I can throw a ball inside to Darwin Barney and be okay. Uh-uh, not this time, not in this ballpark. He goes down and gets that one. Rattles it around in those monster seats, and it comes back down on the playing field. That's a good feeling. Hey, keep your eye on the outfielders here. They'll give you an indication as to whether or not it's going to be over the wall or it might be off the wall. And Young just kind of gave up on it early. Josh Donaldson. He was retired on a nice defensive play by Travis Shaw his first time. Shaw made a barehanded grab and threw Donaldson out at first. It's great to get this guy's bat back in the lineup for the Blue Jays. He's got one of the highest career on base plus slugging against the Red Sox for active players. Outside. You know, you talked about Rodriguez last year may have been tipping his pitches, but he throws two pitches. Yeah. All you have to be is 50% right. <laughs> <laughs> he throws a lot of fastballs. That's what I like about him is he'll, he'll challenge you. He'll, he'll use that fastball. What I think he needs to do, he needs to go inside and outside with it. I mean, if you just continually throw away, 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 hitters are going to pick up on that. Three and one to Donaldson. That's ball four. Well, when you break down a pitcher, you look at his pitch selection and how frequently he throws the various pitches give you an idea what you can look for as a hitter. Well he's got a nice smooth delivery first of all this is his pitch usage in his first start of the year against his former team Baltimore he gave up two earned runs six hits and six innings fastball 64 percent of the time and he'll use the change up at 26 he'll cut the ball a little bit there slider just a little bit but basically just look for two pitches. I think right here Edwin's looking for one pitch. Yeah. Looking for any kind of fastball. The inside outside it doesn't make any difference. Fouls that one back. Just out of his reach. That little movement right at the end just took it off the barrel. We well, mentioned the Blue Jays. This is their 12th game in this stretch of games against the Yankees and the Red Sox. They played 12 straight now against New York and Boston. Edwin has done a great job. He has 12 RBIs during those 11 previous games. No one else on the Blue Jays has more than six. So he's done his part in this great stretch. He's the kind of guy that can carry a ball club when he gets hot. I don't think it's he's as hot as we have seen him in the past. He's just lukewarm right now. 
You mean like three home runs, nine RBIs hot? That's pretty hot. That's hot. He did that last year, of course, at Rogers City. He just he's one of those guys that, you know, he hits a couple of home runs and then he gets into that groove and all of a sudden he's not missing his pitches. Well, all of a sudden he's hitting good pitches too. Yeah. For base hits to right field and if they hang him, he takes him out of the yard. Swing and a drive. Get up, ball, get up, and gone. He got his fastball. Third home run of the afternoon. And the Blue Jays have jumped on Rodriguez early here. What's the next stage after Luke Warm? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting there. He got his pitch and he didn't miss it that time. He found a couple of balls to right field and he told himself stay in there just a little bit longer. Keep the front shoulder in there and Eduardo Rodriguez tried to slip one of those fastball fastballs by him and Edwin was waiting for it. 14 RBIs in the 12 game stretch against the AL East teams. 12 straight against the Yankees in Boston and in shown has driven in 14 runs. Four nothing Blue Jays. Russell Martin takes it inside pitch. He homered off of David Price off the foul pole in center field on Friday. This time, no doubt about it. Up into the monster seats. Boy, he and Jose, they love hitting in this ballpark. Well, they love hitting against the Red Sox in general, but especially here at Fenway Park. For in kind of showing that's his 14th career home run here at Fenway Park. Bautista hit his 23rd career home run here at Fenway. Boy, it's nice when they homer in the same game. That ties him with Evan Longoria for the second most as a visiting player now. That's so what Martin swings and misses. It's two and two to Blue Jays catcher. For Encarnacion, he now has 46 RBIs along with those 12 home runs. Inside. Bautista let off the ball game with a leadoff home run. Darwin Barney hit a one out home run this inning, and Edwin Encarnacion. Did a two out two run homer. Now so Martin takes ball for second walk of the inning. And that's going to bring Xander Bogart and the pitching coach to the mound. Carl Willis going to go out and talk to his young starter. That could be a shell shock. Darwin Barney taking you deep and then Edwin Encarnacion taking you deep so you start to pitch away from contact. The one thing the Blue Jays have in their back pocket, no matter where they are in the standing, is the fact that they're getting great starting pitching. Look at this starters ERA in the American League. The Texas Rangers, who just got you Darvish back, they're at 344. The Blue Jays are right on their heels at 355. The White Sox got a boost. They just picked up James Shields, who'll make his debut this week against the Washington Nationals and the Red Sox. 467. That's a concern. Yes, it is for Boston, and I'm with you. The Blue Jays, with that type of starting pitching, if they continue to get that kind of starting pitching, just remember that file that away. They've got that in their back pocket. They can go on a nice little run. Michael Saunders. He has been pounded inside early this afternoon. Boston have got their bullpen up and working already. We're in the third inning with two outs. Down and away. Heath Embry was just recalled from the AAA protected team. He's down in the bullpen. They sent Noe Ramirez out to open up a spot on the roster. Blue Jays saw Embry at Rogers Center last time these two teams met in Toronto. Two outs. Saunders pulls that inside pitch. You know, when you don't get a good starting pitching, and this has happened to the, to the Boston Red Sox, John Farrell was telling us this 
yesterday that you know it when you when your guy gets knocked out early in the ball game it just messes up your whole bullpen and if you don't have quote long men down there who can pitch three four five innings out of the bullpen it can really mess up the the bullpen Saunders hits it high into center field Jackie Bradley Jr. over in the alley waits on it makes the catch Saunders is retired but the Blue Jays get a pair of home runs here in the third Darwin Barney a one out home run his third and then Edwin Encarnacion a two run shot number 12 for Edwin. members it is time to log on to my blue jays and enter the following code mbj1899 to do that you will earn my blue jays points simply for listening and watching to our broadcast the code must be entered by 1159 we'll have a new code for you tomorrow and among the blue jay points prizes could include possibly those life-size faces of buck and pat those are great guys. The life-size faces of Buck and Pat. <laughs> yeah, those fans, uh, we were passing those out before the ball game today, Buck and I, and the fans were just gobbling them up. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Four nothing Blue Jays in the bottom of the third. Mookie Betts, the leadoff man, he walked his first time up. He pops this one up. It's playable. Matt Dominguez, the third baseman, calls for it near the bag and makes the catch. Marco Estrada, a little bit off on his aim early in this ball game. Just missing ever so slightly, but he was able to pitch around those problems. He walked three in the first two innings. That was a good thing right there. He threw a little cutter, and he just got it off the barrel of the bat. Mookie Betts popped it up. It always helps to get that leadoff batter. Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia has a 12 game hit streak. Started on the 24th of May. 20 hits in those 12 games, including a home run and six RBIs. Just two for eight in this series. For me, watching him this year compared to last year, is he's hitting the ball the other way so much better with a little bit more authority. He's got 25 hits to left field, 22 to center, 24 hits to right field. That's something that Dustin Pedroia didn't do a whole lot of early in his career. Ground ball. Travis is there. He throws out Pedroia. Two up, two down. Well, Marco Estrada comes into this ball game. With a three and two record. This is an 11th start, but his last three starts, he's really picked it up. ERA just over one and a half. Bonus hitting 132, and he has been consistent in that regard. How many times have we 
had a, an Estrada game where we'll be into the sixth inning and say, well, if Estrada's done a good job, the other team's still looking for their first, first hit. hit. That's <laughs> right. Last time against the Yankees, he beat New York for the second time in a five game stretch. And kind of son will get over near the dugout and it is in the dugout. Russell Martin always anxious to make a play on a foul pop up. Came to an abrupt skidding halt. You look at those last three starts. Marco, he got this hot streak started in Minnesota. He made that start on the 19th of May in Minnesota, went eight innings, allowed three hits, struck out nine. And then his next start against the Yankees in New York, four hits over seven innings, and then got the Yankees at Roger Center, three hits over eight innings. Pretty stingy. Very stingy. That game against Minnesota, eight innings, one earned run, no decision. Bogarts waves at that changeup. The breaking ball just not there yet. He's going to continue to try to throw that curveball. See if he can't get it down. Yeah, he's he's a battler out there, and if something's not working, he'll go back to it or. His fastball's not working. He's going to have to improve that. Popped up. Matt Dominguez has been busy. Third baseman into foul ground. Makes the catch. Marco Estrada has baffled the Red Sox early in this ball game. Blue Jays have a four nothing lead. all the San Jose Sharks need was a little bit of home cooking maybe a little bit of bratwurst at home to get back into the series they won last night it is now a 2-1 series lead for the Pittsburgh Penguins game number four of the Stanley Cup final can be seen on CBC it goes 8 o'clock Eastern 5 o'clock Pacific and that is tomorrow you can watch it all and boy those bratwurst look good Buck they sure do Barry and they have surrounded this ballpark they're everywhere outside and inside as well top of the fourth Devin Travis takes the first pitch strike. The Blue Jays had two home runs last inning. It's the fifth time they've had multiple home runs in an inning. First time since New York when Michael Saunders and Russell Martin went deep in the same inning against the Yankees. That was big for another reason too, wasn't it? First time. Canadian ball players have homered in the same inning. Ground ball bouncing up the middle. Pedroia makes a nice play. Oh, what a play. Dustin Pedroia. He just wonder if he's ever going to slow down, but he shows no signs of doing anything like that. That was a terrific play. Looked like a base hit all the way. Didn't think he had any chance at one getting to the ball and then throwing over to first base to get Devin Travis, but he gets a good break on the ball. I love his setup. You can see he hops. Actually was leaning to his left. 
But went to his right, caught the ball, and then threw accurate. Look how strong his arm is here. Thrown across his body and gets Travis in plenty of time. Kevin Pillar hits it to center. No problem for Jackie Bradley Jr. He is there. Two outs. Let's check in with Jamie. C.C. Sabathi is on the mound for the Yankees, and he's throwing the ball very well right now. Since he put that big knee brace on to give him support, he's pitching with a lot of confidence. He's opposed by Kevin Gosman, who gave up that RBI to Rodriguez. You mentioned that knee brace. It's a lot like what uh, Eduardo Rodriguez is going through right now for the Boston Red Sox. Told you he had that dislocated kneecap in spring training when he went on his rehab. They had to call him back from his rehab because of that injury. And all it had to do, all they had to do was tweak his knee brace, put a, a different knee brace on there. He got a little bit more strength, and he's been fine ever since. If you have an injury in a area where you're concerned, you're going to protect that area, whether you don't land on it fully. And now he's got the confidence that knee brace is going to stabilize his knee and he'll be okay to pitch. Well, think about that. Just a dislocated kneecap for a pitcher. And you get all your power from your lower half, either pushing off or landing. If you don't feel good about yourself, you're not going to be able to throw strikes. Chopper back to the mound. Long underhand toss in time. Three up, three down. Blue Jays go quietly in the top of the fourth. Live on your phone and tablet with the MLB.com at bat app. You can customize at bat to feature the Blue Jays and stay up to the moment, any moment, with scores, news, live game video highlights, and much more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. And guys, the umps are, are keeping a close eye on this weather. Of course, we'd love to get this one in before the heavy rain start, which are expected later tonight. Well, Blue Jays and Red Sox players are not too concerned about that. All you can do is play. And you play and don't try to get ahead of yourself. You don't try to complete any innings. How many times have you been on a team where you say, okay, we got to get this inning in? You rush to get the inning in, you end up giving up several runs, and it doesn't really make any difference. You just got to play the game. Just play the game. Managers will say, you know, take a usual at bat. Don't go up there, try and make an out or anything like that, because you never know what's going to happen. The greatest example of that was when Jack Morris went for his 20th win in New York. We were trying to make outs to get the five innings in for Jack to win his 20th game. That's the, the game where Alfredo was swinging at balls that were landing up on the backstop. <laughs> they finally said, okay, that's enough of that. But to his credit, I think there was like a two hour rain delay. Jack came back and got his five innings in and won his 20th game of the season. 
Marco Estrada hits ahead of David Ortiz 0 and 2. And strikes him out on three pitches. Home hardware and building center locations. Proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. One down. Marco Estrada getting zeroed in now. Yes, he is. You can see that. That was a perfect at bat against Ortiz. One, two, three. See you later. And now he paints Travis Shaw to lead off this at bat. For him, I think it's all about pitching off of his fastball. He has to be able to throw his fastball over for strikes and throw it where he needs to because he's got to get the guys, the opposition, thinking about that fastball. That's a cutter hit deep to center field, but Pilar's got a little room there and makes the catch. Travis Shaw hit it in the wrong part of this field, and Pilar says that he will shade power hitters into that big part of center field, 420 feet away, figuring that anything hit to the left center part of the thing is going to be off the green monster. Anywhere else in this ballpark, it's a home run. Pilar. Runs back and makes the catch, and Estrada says that's an out. It's a long out. But they will take it. But to finish that thought, pitching off the fastball, and I thought that's what he did so effectively last year. Pitching off the fastball. And then when they started looking for the fastball, that's when you can start using your changeup. What you do then is you create a swing mentality in the hitter. Throw them enough fastballs, they're going to swing, and then you start mixing in the other pitches. High fly ball to right, Bautista over near the warning track makes the catch. Quick inning for Marco Estrada. He's retired nine in a row. The Blue Jays have a four nothing lead. Now time. For a Blue Jays Central update, here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio. Brought to you by the all new Honda Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. What a year Darwin Barney is putting together for the Blue Jays. And this afternoon, he takes this inside fastball, elevates it down the left field line. Only about 310 down there. Drops it into the front row right there, the front row seats for his third home run. And this afternoon's drive of the game. That's good to say. For Darwin. Absolutely. One of three home runs the Blue Jays have hit. Batting average up to 327. I'd say he's doing a pretty good job filling in for Troy Tulowitzki. Terrific job filling in all over the diamond. Played a little bit of second, a little bit of third. 
Well, Barney, he has 32 hits now. Made a couple of nice plays here the other night. Took a hit away from Bogarts. He also stabbed the line drive and took another hit away from the Red Sox when he was playing shortstop. He prepares himself very well. Obviously worried about possibility of playing three different infield positions in any given time if he doesn't start. Two balls and two strikes. Darwin Barney leading off the fifth for the Blue Jays. Got to figure he's going to throw a fastball here. Batting number nine here in front of Jose Bautista. You don't want to face Bautista with a runner on base. Lead off walk. Mm. That's three walks issued by Rodriguez. Well, Jose Bautista got the Blue Jays off on the right foot here in the first inning. This ball deep to left field. It just squeaks over for the home run for Bautista. He wasn't really sure if that was going to be called a home run. But it ends up being a solo home run. And Blue Jays have hit two more since then. For Bautista, that's his 40th career home run against the Boston Red Sox. His 23rd, he's hit here at Fenway Park, and obviously John Farrell, the manager, is a bit concerned about where this game is headed. Red Sox trail four to nothing. Carl Willis, the pitching coach, I'm buying some time for the bullpen more than any. Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, looks like Heath Embry has now got up once again and is starting to throw once again instead of Clay Buckle, which we saw earlier. So Bautista has homered and flied out. Bautista is sitting back on that back leg looking for another pitch to hit out of here. Looking for something inside. You know, he's good enough that he can take that ball just off the plate or early in the count that it hits the corner. He's looking for something in to do what Edwin did his last time up. Ground ball to short. Bogarts, Pedroia for one, back to first, double play. But Rodriguez threw him an off speed pitch, got a ball off the end of the bat. Red Sox turn two. That is a tough pitch to try and pull. It's got a lot of movement on it right at the end. Takes it off the barrel. It's a tough pitch to try and pull. You're better off just shooting that ball to right field. Josh Donaldson back in the lineup. He's the DH this afternoon. Grounded out and walked. He scored on the Encarnacion two run home run in the third. Who is that ball into the seats? See Donaldson wearing that protective ring around his right thumb. He's got that rubber game saver, if you will, which allows the hitters to play with those deep bone bruises. Thumb saver. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it, it makes a difference too. Big bouncing ball to third. Travis Shaw will take his time. Donaldson has grounded out twice. Quick inning for Rodriguez. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Boston trails by four.
Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by the all-new Honda Civic. Now available with Turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. Iconic Fenway Park, and they have done a great job of renovating the park. It was about a 10-year program where they took on different challenges over the course of the off season and they have upgraded it in many aspects and it's turned into one of the real destination ballparks in North America. Jackie Bradley Jr. to lead things off takes a first pitch strike from Mark Lewis. Start talking about iconic baseball parks on this day in 1989. Blue Jays opened up their state of the art ballpark. Skydome opened up on this day. Jimmy Key took the mound. Yes. Against the Brewers. Hard to fathom it was that long ago. You know it's even harder to fathom than him as he goes around. You know, a three pitch strikeout for Marco Estrada is when that park opened up, how nice it was and how quickly the other parks that were built right after it took its place. Basically. Check swing by Bradley. He goes around. Different style of ballparks in the next five years or so when they opened up Camden Yard, Safeco Field, AT&T Park, all those great mm -hmm. retro ballparks, if you will. A lot of brick included in the construction of those ballparks. Tell you though, when, when Skydome opened up, there was nothing like it. Nobody had ever seen anything like that. Retractable dome. You could play inside, outside. Two different fields. Depending on the weather. It was a perfect storm too for the opening of that stadium. Obviously the franchise in need of a big league stadium but the ball club was very good at that time mm -hmm. too. So they moved over mid season in June of 89 and they had a great ball club and because of that they filled it every single night. It's a place to be wasn't it. That was the best ticket in town. Now it's become a destination again because the ball club is so good and a great run they had last year. As Young hits this one into the alley. Pilar is there. Two quick outs here in the fifth. Well Marco Estrada is just doing what he did last year just getting out after out after out and then when the dust settles and you look up and you take a look at some of the numbers. The opponent's batting average is the best in the American League. They're only hitting a buck 77 against Marco Estrada. Danny Salazar throws hard. He's second. Stephen Wright, the knuckleballers in their sale, and Rich Hill also round out the top five. And Marco, he's, he does it with four different pitches. And for me, watching him this afternoon, he's starting to get zeroed in. Changeup misses. It's a ball on the strike. Christian Vasquez, the young catcher for the Red Sox, get into a fielder's choice. Isn't that true all the time with the good pitchers? They come out of that bullpen. They might not be as sharp. He walked the first couple of batters, had another walk in the third inning. Then all of a sudden, it clicks in, and you had your chance. Great changeup, couple of strikeouts in the inning. Red Sox go down in order in the fifth. We'll go to the sixth. Big bats coming up for the Blue Jays. Edwin Encarnacion hit his 12th home run in his first at bat. Then Russell Martin and Michael Saunders for nothing Jays.
Trying to shun Homer with a man aboard in the third. His second two run home run of the series. His 12th home run of the season and gives him RBIs number 45 and 46 for the season. In fact, he's moving up the leaderboard in that department. Gave Blue Jays a little bit more breathing room. David Ortiz leads the American League in RBIs, and look at what Ed Edwin's doing. He is starting to creep up and trying to catch Ortiz. Sixth inning. Blue Jays have four runs on just three hits. Red Sox no runs looking for their first hit of the ball game. As a strike. The Blue Jays coming into this game 30 and 27 three and a half games back of the Boston Red Sox. Jays have won eight of the last ten. Off speed pitch through them. That looked like a change up right there that got underneath the bat of Encarnacion. Keep doing what you're doing. They are locked in right now against Rodriguez. Ground ball, Pedroia in the shift. Goes across the diamond in time. But Rodriguez has done a pretty good job of minimizing the damage. The three hits he's given up have all been home runs, but he finds himself trailing four to nothing. You know what he hasn't done? He hasn't struck out any batters today. With that good fastball, I don't really classify him as a strikeout type of pitcher because he's fastball changeup. He doesn't throw a breaking ball, a slider or a curveball that could pick up a lot of strikeouts with not a whole lot of swing and miss stuff mm -hmm. he might overpower you from time to time with that fastball but it'll lead to a pop up or maybe a ground up he had three strikeouts in his first start Russell takes ball too low Russell Martin hitting in the cleanup spot today against the lefty. Fastball at the knees, it's two and two. Russell trying to get something going consistently at the plate. Disappointing start to his season with the bat. That ball gets away from Vasquez. Usually, when you have a hot streak, you'd like it to last a little bit longer than about three or four games. You want to go about two weeks of just staying right in that zone. Hitting the ball hard. Also, was he shows signs of it? There's some glimpses of his height streak, but nothing consistent yet. He had the great series in New York against the Yankees. Came home and had some big hits against the Red Sox. Remember that hit against Kimball? That was a big hit. I think more than anything, you'd like to string together good at bats. Where you Get good pitches to hit, not chasing pitches off the plate. As it drives to left field, that ball is gone. Russell Martin with a line drive home run into the seats. His fourth homer of the season. And the fourth that Rodriguez has given up today. Boy, that was a shot. That was a laser by Russell Martin, and, and that'll get you going right there. That ball would have left any ballpark on a line. That thing was still rising when it hit the seats in left field. They tried to trick Russell Martin, but he's not going to fall for those tricks that a catcher will do. You saw the catcher Vasquez act like they were going to come inside tapping the ground right by Russell Martin and then slid to the outside right like like that. And Russell said I'm not fooling for that. I've been around long enough. Watch it one more time Vasquez the, the catcher 
He calls for a pitch away, taps the ground. Uh-uh. That is right down Broadway right there. And Russell says, I'll take care of that. Saunders hits a line drive, and it's right at Jackie Bradley Jr. Well, Blue Jays' big bats have come alive here this Sunday afternoon. That pitch was down, and, and he went down and got it. That was the impressive part of that at bat, that he was able to go down and get it and get it up. And again, he created a lot of backspin on that swing. That thing was still rising when it left the ballpark. So that's going to be it for the young left-hander Eduardo Rodriguez. He leaves the ball game having surrendered just four hits, but all four hits were home runs. He leaves with the Red Sox trailing five nothing. Keith Embry into the ball game. All new Honda Civic now available with turbo. The 2016 North American Car of the Year. Well, the Blue Jays are into the Red Sox bullpen. This is Heath Hembry, fresh off the recall from Triple A Pawtucket. This will be his 13th appearance of the season. That just happened this morning when they just brought him back up from Triple A when they sent back down Noe Ramirez, second stint with Major League Club for Embry. Henry 2-0 with a 214 earned run average. He has handled right handers because he's got a powerful slider. Good arm. Good fastball, good slider, but lefties has given, have given him trouble. Devin Travis batting with two outs and nobody on. He goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Good fastball. Travis a little bit behind it just yet. Red Sox have done a good job over the years of recognizing players and other organizations. So when they are ready to make a trade, they can pick up some young players that'll help them in the future. They picked up Heath Embry from San Francisco when they traded Jake Peavy over there. They also got another pitcher in that deal, a left hander named Escobar. Who's pitched a little bit with the Red Sox, but you trade a veteran like that, you gotta recognize a guy who's got a good young arm like this guy does. That was during the July trade deadline period in 2014. When they sent Jake Peavy out to the Giants. Embry has been in it. The reliever his entire career I mean, back in the minors. They want a little bit more power in that bullpen, if you will, with their pitches. I think he fits the bill. Right now, he's got the power arm that they lost in Carson Smith. 
and they acquired Carson Smith from Seattle for John Farrell's bullpen, so he would be a power arm, but he is been injured and he's gone under, undergone Tommy John surgery. That was a big loss for him. We were really counting on him against some of these right handed hitters in the American League East. He's tough, or he was tough on righties. Now he's going to miss this year. Devin Travis is battling here on Friday night. He had a similar at bat against Koji Ohara. End up hitting a home run into the seats in left. Almost as if he's trying to gauge the timing of getting that barrel out in front. Fastball a little bit more. This guy's got a little bit more than Uahara. 96 upstairs. That ends the inning. Embry strikes out Devin Travis. But the home run parade continues here at Fenway. Russell Martin, a solo shot, his third of the season. It's all Blue Jays early on. This afternoon got started with the grounds crew covering up the field. There was some rain here. They did a nice job of making sure the infield didn't get wet. Weather has cleared out. We have played a great game, and Marco Estrada, after a little bit of a shaky start in the first, has really walked in. A couple of walks uh, to the first two batters he faced this afternoon. He also had a leadoff walk to Ramirez in the second inning, but then got locked in, and he's kept that pitch count down. Don't be in a hurry. When you see them starting to take the, the tarp off and get, get that turfus ready, a lot of times guys will start trying to hurry through the inning to get through it. Don't do it. Just keep pitching your game. Yeah. We talk about a pivotal play in this ball game, and it happened in the first inning after Betts and Pedroia drew leadoff walks to start the game. Sandra Bogarts bunted right back to the mound. And it was a surprising move to say the least, but Marco Estrada came off the mound and made a terrific play, got the lead runner at third base. That was their best chance to score a run early, and they're so good in the first inning best team in baseball but that was a pivotal play so far Fine ball the center field and that generally means you're going to be out one down let's check it with Jamie Duffy, the starter for the Twins, and how about Logan Morrison? He's on fire. He homered again today. That's your guy, huh? Wow. You love that guy now. He got six home runs now. We're getting our daily Logan Morrison <laughs> update from you every well, day. He came like from it. nowhere, man. He was dead in the water.
That's to Bedroya. Walked and grounded out. This is the third time through now for the Boston Red Sox against Marco Estrada. They do such a good job, especially this guy right here, of gathering information and then coming up with hits. Pedroia last year led the American League in hitting with a 451 average, third time he faced a starter in a game. You don't think he's putting together a game plan that third time through? Well, he remembers every pitch he's ever seen. So he'll go back to the bench each time and say, you're not going to get me out on that pitch. I'm going to cover that pitch next time you try to throw. But that's where Estrada is so tough because he might pitch you one way the first or second time through. He might change it all up his third time through. Well, right now he's swinging at everything. So you might be able to bounce a ball and get him to chase because Estrada has done such a good job of throwing everything in the strike zone. Now it's time to throw one out of the strike zone. Bounce a curveball. We haven't seen too many curveballs this afternoon from Marco Estrada. Fastball line to Dominguez at third. Two down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Partnership. 1912. Do you remember that game? No, I missed that <laughs> one. Greatest game ever played. Ty Cobb said that. Sander Bogarts goes after the first pitch and in kind of shown in foul territory makes the catch. Marco Estrada retires the side in order in the six will go to the seventh five nothing Blue Jay. A Blue Jays flex pack time is running out. It is your last chance to purchase one for the 2016 season. You have to pick them up before June the 9th at 5 p.m. Our account executives will find the package that best suits your needs. Go to BlueJays.com to get all the information, Buck. Well, you got to make sure you sign up. The Baltimore Orioles will be at Rogers Center for a four game series, followed by a quick two game series against Philadelphia. Then Arizona comes to Rogers Center. June 21st, 22nd, Carmes Pilar pops out to Hanley Ramirez at first base. That's the first out of the top half of the seventh. So Matt Dominguez, who has just been recalled from Triple A Buffalo, got the start at third base. Mingus has gone over two so far. The Blue Jays have hit four home runs here this afternoon. It's the third time this season they've had a four homer game. Ironically, they've all come on the road. The four homer game on the 29th of April at Tampa Bay. Four more home runs on the 20th of May in Minnesota. Matt Dominguez hits one deep to short. Bogart's long throw and in time. 
Tim Leeper, the first base coach, wants to see the replay of that one. What a play by Bogarts and a nice scoop by Hanley Ramirez at first. He's one of the best players in the American League. Young players, he goes to his right. A la Derek Jeter up in the air all the way across the diamond and Ramirez does a good job. That, that's a, a great play. He, he is out. As a first baseman, you want to get as low as possible. And this ball right off the lip, so you're not real sure where that ball is going to hop. You can see how low he is. He gets down there, gets the hop, and records the out over at first base. But what a play on both ends. Xander Bogarts is developing into a MVP candidate. He is an all-star athlete for sure. A guy that can play defense and well, among he can, the league leaders and everything offensively. He can hit, and he's batting third on the best hitting team in the American League. And he plays a premium position at shortstop. He's improved so much as a shortstop. Talked to Brian Butterfield about that. He says, you know, he still has a ways to go. There's a few things in his game that he can he can work on, but he's getting much better at shortstop. And he's going to be one of the best players in the American League. Brian Butterfield, of course, puts in hours with these infielders and does a terrific job with them. Butterfield will identify weaknesses and try to build up on those weaknesses and he does a great job. We've seen it with the Blue Jays over the years and now he's taken his skills to the Boston Red Sox a terrific coach and a great guy. There are some issues around the bag that they cleaned up just a little bit his first step. He says now Bogarts comes to me to talk about how I can get better instead of me going to go find him. Don't you love that with young players when they seek out the coaches. To ask them to help him. Well, you've got tremendous mentors here in Boston with Ortiz and Pedroia, two of the best in the game. Two and two, two outs, all three. I tell you what, when young players start to drift here with the Red Sox, you got Pedroia and Ortiz to deal with. They don't drift, drift too far, do they? <laughs> <laughs> Bring them back down to earth. They look at this is the way we do things around here. I remember Pedroia saying that a couple of years ago. Inside now when Barney takes ball four, two out walk. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Justin Upton batting seventh in that lineup. He is two for three with a pair of RBIs today. Verlander, five and two thirds, seven strikeouts so far. Quintana started for Chicago. He's out of the game. Bautista hits that one off the end of the bat. That one's spinning and headed back to the field, but it died in deep grass. Hit that one right off the end of the bat. Barney's at first. Blue Jays have drawn four walks this afternoon. Darwin's got a couple of them. He's been on base all three times this afternoon. Home run and two walks. Bautista homered in the first inning and got the Blue Jays off and running a quick start. He staked Estrada to an early lead. It's the second. Lead off home run Jose has hit this season, his sixth career lead off home run. And that never would have happened unless the ball players got together and said, you know what, we got to do something about this offense. Jose said, I'll hit lead off, and it's been about two or three weeks, and they've been hot ever since. I don't think it's a, excuse me, Buck, a, a long term solution for the team. I, I, I'm not sure. But something had to be done to try and jar this offense. There are so few leadoff hitters in the game today that everybody's looking for a different way to get your best three hitters up to the plate. Look around, there are a lot of great hitters hitting in the two spot. Buck Showalter in Baltimore took it to another extreme. He went to Adam Jones, who'd been struggling, and said, Adam, I'm going to give you a choice here. You've got two choices. You can either take a couple of days off and work in the cage and get things together or bat leadoff for me. He batted the lead off and he's been raking ever since. Yeah, he's gotten hot.
bounced in the dirt. Marco Estrada, boy, he had a interesting start to this ball game. Walked Mookie Betts and Dustin Pedroia. Looked like he was in for a tough inning, but he was able to strand those two base runners, and they have had one base runner since. Looking for their first hit. Two and two to Bautista. Now it's a full count. Barney at first, so he'd be off on the pitch, of course. Donaldson waits on deck. Bautista strikes out the Blue Jays leave a base runner on base here in the seventh. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. Marco Estrada coming back out. He's shutting out the Red Sox. Rogers customers get free VIP Blue Jays experiences like alumni meet and greet, seat upgrades, offers, and more with Game Plus. It's all part of the MLB.com ballpark app. Learn more at BlueJays.com slash Game Plus. Thank you very much, Barry Davis. Quite a ball game going on here. The Blue Jays have hit four home runs. They have five runs. And Marco Estrada has been terrific. Two of those three walks came in the first two batters he faced today. He's had just one base runner since the first has four strikeouts to throw 82 pitches. Yeah that's OK. Just keep keep going out there and just keep throwing. I think you can push him on a day like today to go as long as you want to against this good offense that the Red Sox have thrown out there. He can get you with the curveball. He can elevate the fastball if he needs to or he can throw the change up. He can get you out in so many different ways and right now the Red Sox are befuddled with by Marco Estrada. The fewest hits the Red Sox have gotten, believe it or not, in a game this year. They were one hit by Tampa Bay back in April. Marco Estrada so far has been better. Boston had five hits in the Blue Jays win on Friday night. They had 11 hits in the game yesterday in that 6 4 win. Marco Estrada. Remember, last year, of course, he carried no hitters into the eighth inning in consecutive games, June 19th. And June 24th, 19th, against the Orioles, and the June 24th game down in St. Pete against Tampa Bay. Bottom of the seventh. 
Middle of the order for Boston will be Ortiz, Shaw, and Ramirez. David Ortiz, there are his numbers. You know he and Dustin Pedroia have the longest hitting streak in the major leagues right now? 12 games. This is a fly ball into shallow right. Darwin Barney backing up. Shortstop makes the catch out in right field. That's 16 straight retired by Estrada. A lot of pop-ups and a lot of fly balls this afternoon. Blue Jays will head to Detroit after this game to take on the Tigers in a three game series Monday night Tuesday night and Wednesday afternoon. Travis Shaw. These are beautiful games to watch when you see a pitcher like Marco Estrada. Continuing to locate change speeds really mess up the timing of the Red Sox hitters. You probably locked in on Russell Martin aren't you. The way he's calling the game today. It is a joy to catch a pitcher that can do whatever you ask. It's like you got a full tube box and you can reach in there and grab anything. And they all work and they're all working right now. Russell can just sit back there and say oh, how about a couple of these and one of those and we'll mix in another one of these and no hesitation whatsoever. Well that's Hainage. a beautiful pitch. You can you can see Russell he's thinking about OK let's see through that scouting report we were talking about this this OK we got to go curveball. He hung it and Pilar is there he got away with one right there and Estrada knows it. He pumped his fist and hit his chest looked back into Martin said that's my fault man. He left it up. But it threw I, I thought the hitter off just a little bit where he couldn't lay back on it and get enough into it. Marco happy with that one. He said I I made a mistake. It was the right call. But he changed speeds just enough that Shaw didn't get all of it. Hanley Ramirez now nobody on in two outs. That he comes right back to it. Huh? Fresh in his mind, he'd hung that previous curveball, so he drops in the next one perfectly for a strike. Strike two. This is the guy they need to get going. I think the Red Sox. Not now. Not well, not now. <laughs> no, you can do it some other time. <laughs> but I say that because he hasn't had an extra base hit since May 15th. He was really struggling hitting behind Ortiz today behind Shaw. There's that curveball. This time he bounces it in the dirt. Hey, for all I care, he could <laughs> stay in the slump all, all season long. But this is the best hitting club in the American League. Foul up against the fence. Boston leads the AL East. They are 10 games over 500 at 33 and 23, a game ahead of the Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore losing to the Yankees in Baltimore, one to nothing, bottom of the fifth. Two and two now to Hanley Ramirez. And they've built up that league, I think, on the strength of their hitting. They also lead the American League in hitting. But today, not so much. Came into this game with a team batting average of 295. Popped up. That's going to be behind the Red Sox dugout. They just finished off the month of May where they were super hot, hot, super charged. They had a slugging percentage of 525 in the month of May. That's the second highest in a month in team history. Everybody was hitting.
foul them. Russell Martin liked that last pitch. He acknowledged that fact to Estrada after the foul tip. Where do they go now? I think he's ready for a fastball somewhere. Just looking at Ramirez's feet, see if he can pick up anything there. Coming inside, it is a fastball. Left it out over the plate a little bit. Quite a battle going on here between a former batting champ and Marco Strutter. to backing up this ball is carrying and makes a running catch. Nice play by Jose Bautista. Hanley Ramirez hit it hard, but there's a lot of room out there in right and Estrada. Another terrific defensive play in support. Bautista runs it down. Red Sox no hits through seven. Fans enter the Bacardi Blue Jays for a day contest for a chance to win a great Blue Jays on-field experience. For details, entry form, and rules, go to bluejays.com slash Bacardi contest. It closes Thursday, June 30th at 4.59 p.m. Buck, as we go to the top of the eighth, the biggest challenge right now for Marco Estrada could be this weather as the rain has started to fall here, and it is starting to pick up. Marco Estrada can't do a thing about the rain. He has just really taken care of the Boston Red Sox. He has really been on his game. He always carries that softball around in between innings just to keep his hands stretched out. And then he goes back out and that baseball feels like a golf ball yeah. in his hands. He can yeah. do a lot of things with it. Josh Donaldson, he'll start things off here in the eight. Josh has been to DH this afternoon. Did not play in yesterday's game. Came in this ball game against the left-handed starter. Eduardo Rodriguez, the Blue Jays, knocked him out in the sixth. There's a breaking ball that finds the strike zone. It's 0-2. He's going to have to play through some of this pain if he's going to do that. Blue Jays do not have another off day until the 20th of this month. So Josh, he's a gamer. He wants to be out there. Cut out in front of that pitch and popped it over the Blue Jays. My well, teammate Hal McCray said, you know what? I got all winter to rest. <laughs> <laughs> that can be nagging. That, that right thumb, that right hand injury. Let's go out there and play. Swing at that pitch. Donaldson missed the game yesterday because of a bruised right hand. He has been jammed a few times, and that bat continues to beat up the 
webbing between your thumb and your index finger and just become sore and swollen and hard to really grip that bat. Also becomes a problem throwing. Throwing. That's why he's DHing today. Just like a, a good craftsman needs good tools, a good hitter needs his hands to hit. And if you've got any kind of pain in your hand, it's tough to pull the trigger sometimes. Another foul into the seats. Catchers would deal with that from time to time, especially when you catch a sinker ball pitcher a lot. You take that ball off your glove, it hits in that thumb, and you'll twist that thumb and aggravate that, and you'll play with a swollen up thumb quite a bit. A lot of swelling in your thumb and that big fat pad of your. They got a little ca uh, cast for that now, don't they? It's yeah. right over your thumb. Like a little holster for your thumb, a little hard plastic thumb guard. Donaldson trying to time up Hugh Hembry here. Some long at bats by the Blue Jays against Hembry. Evan makes, Travis had an extended at bat in the six and eventually struck out. That just makes Marcos wait on the bench just a little bit longer, doesn't it? Fastball strikes him out. Three strikeouts for Hembry. Marco Estrada, seven innings, no hits allowed. He's walked three, thrown just 98 pitches. He had a 26 pitch first inning and then really settled down. Done a terrific job of making adjustments, and that's been Marco Estrada's work ethic. A couple of bad pitches, a couple of bad innings. He sorts things out right away and gets back on track. It went in Connoisseur, one of four Blue Jay home runs this afternoon. He had a two run home run in the third off Eduardo Rodriguez. During this 12 game stretch, the Blue Jays are 8 and 3 in the first 11 against Boston and New York. When they started this stretch, they were two games under 500 at 22 and 24. Six games back in the division. And everybody was saying, What's wrong with the Blue Jays? Why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they? You know what? It's taken everybody. And that ball's right off the end of the bat. It's taken everybody to make the playoffs last year to get on track. But some of these teams are now starting to find their spread stride. Starting to win some ball games. That extra month's worth of baseball certainly takes its toll. That's Clay Buckholtz, who is now working out of the bullpen for Boston. World Series champs, Kansas City Royals got off to a slow start. Houston, who played into the playoffs they got off to a slow start but they've bounced back they won two in a row in eight of their last ten Texas Rangers you can say the same thing that team is on a roll right now they too have won two in a row in eight of their last ten they are nine games over excuse me they are eleven games over two games up in the AL West Russell Martin with a home run his last time up. That home run by Martin was the 30th home run the Blue Jays have hit in their last 18 games. So quietly they're starting to get their strokes back and Russell himself has enjoyed a nice stretch over his last eight. Looking a little bit more like the Blue Jays. 2015 offensively. The home run so prominent. He Henry strikes out Martin. Three up, three down. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Blue Jays have a five nothing lead. Boston doesn't have a hit yet. Mark Wood.
Marco Estrada has been in the gym here at Fenway Park. He threw 26 pitches in the first inning and walked two men in the first inning. The Red Sox looking for their first hit of the ball game as Estrada has confused them all afternoon. He also walked the leadoff batter in the second inning, and that's the last time that the Red Sox have had a base runner. He walked Hanley Ramirez to lead off the second inning, and that has been it. He has been pitching out of the windup ever since. Marco Estrada's opponent's batting average into the eighth inning now stands at 163. He has dropped that ERA down to 220. Popped up right out in front of home. Matt Dominguez, he's been busy all afternoon catching these pop-ups, and he makes another catch. That's the first out of the bottom of the eighth. How about Russell Martin on that one? You think he didn't want to get involved in that thing? This is where all the fielders, they want to help out their pitcher. They'll do anything to try and make a play. Russell came hard charging from behind the plate, but then was called off by Matt Dominguez. Five pop ups on the infield. High fastball. They high fastball. It Chris Young 0 for 2. He drives this one deep to left. And that's going to break up the no hitter and the shutout. Chris Young with his fourth home run jumps on that first pitch and hits it into the green monster seats. And that'll end the no hit bid. Seven and a third of no hit ball. There goes the no hitter. There goes the shutout. Now you got to win the ball game. And that's going to be bring Pete Walker out to the mound for Marco Estrada. Marco's been in this situation before. He did it a couple of times last year. They wanted that cutter front door, and it ended up in the middle of the plate. Then Young puts it in the monster seat. Marco had the no hitter against the Baltimore Orioles last year. That was broken up late. He also had that no hitter against Tampa Bay that was broken up late. And now the best hitting team in the American League. It's their first hit off of Estrada in the eighth. Pete Walker just out to you. Help Estrada regroup after the disappointment of giving up that first hit of the ball game. Justin Vasquez fouls off the first pitch. Well, you mentioned those two previous outings in which he took a no hitter deep into the game, into the eighth inning. June 19th 2015 against the Orioles at Rogers Center and his next start against Tampa Bay down in St. Pete and in that game in St. Pete he had a perfect game and you remember that's where Josh Donaldson yeah. made that diving catch into the seats and then Logan Forsythe got an infield hit yeah I was going to say one of those games one of those were stopped on on an infield hit. Line drive to right. Bautista on the move. What a catch. Jose Bautista caught that sinking line drive and then tumbled to the grass. I told you his teammates will do anything to help him out. Bautista made a nice play to end the seventh inning, last inning, and now makes one here to get the second out here in the eighth inning. Throws that glove down there and gives up his body to take the pounding as it hits the dirt. Bautista with a nice play. Mookie Betts makes a first pitch strike. Oh, and two. Jose Bautista got a good jump on this one. Watch his. Angle towards the ball. He went right to it, lands on the grass, makes a great play. Buki Betts strikes out, and Marco Estrada is through eight innings. He loses the no hitter and loses the shutout, but he can still smile as he's got a 5 1 lead.
Catching a game in the U.S., you can share all of those experiences as they happen, and there were many today. And with Rome Like Home from Rogers, you can use your phone exactly as you do at home, starting at $5 a day in the U.S. Go to rogers.com slash Rome Like Home for more details. Another fantastic weekend of Blue Jay fans on the road, Buck, and I'm sure they'll now be heading for home as soon as this game ends. They have certainly been entertained. He's some terrific baseball, Marco Estrada. He was a one-man show today. He gave up just one hit through eight innings. Now they're having a conversation about how you feel, where you at. Doesn't and look like he's done. No, I don't think so. No, nobody's warming up. He's got that towel, the familiar towel around his arm. Clay Buckholtz will pitch now for the Boston Red Sox. He is now in the bullpen after starting the season as a starter. Got knocked out. You can see his numbers. All of them are inflated, and that's why he is in the bullpen now. Clay Buckholtz. The author of a no hitter himself in his rookie season. Michael Saunders, he might want to back up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> They've been pounding him in, wow. haven't they? And they have kept it inside all afternoon. They've got him in that shift where there's three infielders on the right side, and Bogarts is right at straightaway shortstop. Pitching him in. Get that ground ball to Shaw, who was on the first base side of second. One down here in the top of the ninth. Heath Embry did a nice job for Boston. He went two and a third, did not allow a hit or a run. Walked one and struck out four. Blue Jays only have four hits. All four of those hits were home runs. We had four hits yesterday. And scored four runs. Difference yesterday is two of their four runs were scored on a strikeout. <laughs> Not exactly the kind of attack you want to put together on a regular basis. Devin Travis 0 for 3. Devin has reached base, excuse me, Buck, in every game that he has played in. That's nine. This is game number 10 since coming off his rehab assignment. Still trying to get on base for the first time this afternoon. Fouls it right back in our direction. Thankfully, it was high. <laughs> <laughs> Roberto Osuna, he's cranking it up down in the bullpen. Roberto threw a little bit early in the game just to see how he was feeling. Strike three call. Buckholz gets Travis with the breaking ball. You know, there's no question. Clay Buckholz has outstanding stuff. He just hasn't been able to take it to the mound when he's a starter. Maybe going into the bullpen where you work an inning here or, or an inning there, you can find it. He's made 181 appearances for the Boston Red Sox. 178 of them have been starts. So John Farrell, he said it uh, the other day here. He said, hey, we're going to skip our fifth starter till the 18th of this month. Somebody please take that job. Pilar grounds out to the third baseman. Clay Buckholz dispatches the Blue Jays in order here in the ninth. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. The Blue Jays trying to win the series here in Boston. They have a 5-1 lead. Marco Estrada looks like he's coming back out.
Estrada has allowed just one hit through eight innings. It was a solo home run with one out in the eighth inning to Chris Young. He has never thrown a complete game in the major leagues as long as having eight and two thirds. Justin Smoke takes over defensively at first for Edwin Encarnacion. Justin Pedroia. It'll be Pedroia, Bogarts, and Ortiz. Doesn't get any tougher for the Blue Jays. 5 1 Blue Jays. Pedroia rips a base hit into left. Sanders will try to cut it off. Pedroia is headed for a second. He'll get there standing up with a leadoff double. For Pedroia, that extends his personal hit streak against the Blue Jays and makes it 26 straight. He has tied Jerry Remy for the all time hit streak against the Blue Jays, and that's going to do it. As John Gibbons has made the call to the bullpen, Dustin Pedroia extends his hit streak in this at bat here in the ninth. That started back in September of 2014. He got one hit in each game. Marco Estrada is going to walk off with the game ball. What a masterful afternoon he had today. Marco Estrada is developed into the Blue Jays ace and the fans know it. What a terrific outing. Shutting down the best hitting team in baseball on just one hit. It goes eight plus a batter. He gives up two hits. He gave up the home run to Chris Young and the leadoff double to Dustin Pedroia. 110 pitches. Marco looking for his fourth win of the season. Roberto Osuna. No swing, and Bogarts barely got out of the way of that inside pitch. Juan Farrell's coming out to ask if he was hit on that one one more time. They wanted to go down and away. And this thing went up and in against Bogarts, who throws the bat down. That is a scary, scary feel. When you see that thing, especially as hard as Osuna throws. Roberto Osuna not in a save situation here. It's his 26th appearance. He has also worked in six of the last eight ball games for the Blue Jays. We told you at the beginning there's been a lot of close games, so John Gibbons likes to go to his closer in these situations. 13 for 14 and save opportunities. He had a big one here on Friday night. Yeah, he sure did. He was able to strike out Xander Bogarts with the final pitch. 99 mile an hour fastball and that snapped Bogart's long hit streak. He had to work an inning and a third in that game 
against the Red Sox. He threw a lot of pitches, but he had plenty left in the tank to finish off Bogarts. Popped up. Another pop up on the infield. Evan Travis calls for it, makes the catch. David Ortiz, after his last at bat, throws the batting gloves into the seats to give a young fan a terrific memory. And how about that? He shares it with his sister. That's pretty awesome. Look at the smile on those faces. <laughs> That is so awesome. David Ortiz saying there's no hits in those gloves. I'm getting rid of them. Ortiz 0 for 3 so far. First pitch strike. Even though it's not a save situation, when you have this part of the order coming up here in the ninth in Fenway, you go to Osuna. The last thing you want to do is get the crowd back into a ball game. Get the Red Sox thinking that they have a shot at winning this game. You want to stop it right here. So you bring in your best reliever. John Gibbons isn't worrying about who's got so many stats and piling up. He's thinking about wins. That's the only stat he's worried about. The Blue Jays looking for their fifth straight series win. The turnaround began in Minnesota. Coincidental with Bautista being in, placed into the leadoff spot in the batting order. The Blue Jays have improved every aspect of their game over the last 16 games. The defense has been great. Yeah. Starting pitching, bullpen has gotten good. And the hitting has come around. 30 home runs in their last 18 games. Ortiz drills this, and that is going to score a run. Pedroia's around third. He's going to jog in. Ortiz will jog in the second. 26 doubles for David Ortiz, RBI number 54. That gets hit, hit streak up to 13 games and closes the book on Marco Estrada. That run as Pedroia scores his charge to Estrada. David Ortiz can still turn on a fastball. Osuna challenged him on the inner half with that fastball, and the Big Bang can still get the head out. Another double. What is that, 501 now as a Red Sox? Might be 502. And he gives way to the pinch runner. Here's Nick Castillo, who has just called up from AAA Pawtucket before this game. Here's where it gets interesting Travis Shaw batting with one out. Osuna never gets rattled. Gives up the RBI double to you. Ortiz comes right back, throws strike one to Sean. Inside corner. For David Ortiz, that double. Tied him for the third most ever with Jim Rice in doubles in this ballpark. What a career. One and two now to Sean. That RBI also tied him with Rice for the third most ever here at Fenway Park. 800. And two RBIs. Osuna well, strikes out Shaw. Two down. So Marco Estrada's line is complete. He goes eight innings plus a batter, gives up two hits, two earned runs, walked three and struck out five. He was terrific. His ERA now at 241 for the season. He's in line for his fourth win. How about the first two batters of the ball game? He walked both of them. And it looked like, well, it might not be Marco's day, but he rebounded quickly. And he is in line for another win. Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez drew a leadoff walk in the second.
Estrada retired 19 in a row at one point. After the Ramirez walk in the second. Went all the way to one out in the eighth. He was terrific. 19 in a row. Yeah, that curveball work. In, I thought his cutter was really good today. It had a little bit of extra on it. And it was moving. Put it in a good spot. Estrada floating with another no hitter. Third time he's done that since he's come to the Blue Jays. And I'm sure there was a point if he wondered if he was ever going to be a major league pitcher. Now he's wondering if he's ever going to throw a no hitter. <laughs> <laughs> he has really developed into a terrific pitcher. Fly ball to deep center. Pilar is on the run. This one is over his head off the wall. He barehands it and throws it back to second. The pinch runner comes in to score. Hanley Ramirez with an RBI double. There's the first extra base hit for Hanley Ramirez. It's made the 15th. And he put a charge into that thing. Fastball away from Osuna and Hanley Ramirez. They've been jamming him with fastballs. This time it's away. And he gets all of it. Right out into that 420 Bermuda Triangle, if you will, in center field. Scores Castillo and the Red Sox never say die. Red Sox bring the tying run to the plate. How about that play Pilar made? If that ball gets past him, Ramirez ends up in third. But he barehanded it off the wall and got it back in quickly. So now Jackie Bradley Jr. steps to the plate representing the tying run. Pete Walker with a brief visit to the mound and now the rain has picked up here. He's got one thing on his mind. That swing right there. He was trying to tie up the ball game. The outfielders are very deep, especially Kevin Pillar in center field. Nothing over your head because Bradley's tying run. Osuna reaching back for a little extra, just like he did here on Friday. That last pitch he had the other day against Bogart was 99, and it was a high fastball. From him there, it's one and two. The Blue Jays are eight and three through this 12 game stretch against the Yankees in Boston. That's his best pitch right there, that fastball. He's trying to go upstairs with it. Breaking ball, line drive into right. That's going to score a run. Here comes Ramirez. It's a one-run ball game. He went to the slider, and, and that's why I said that's his best pitch. He's going upstairs with because I don't think Jackie Bradley could catch up to his fastball. You never want to get beat with your second best pitch. And Roberto's best pitch is a fastball. He blew a couple of them by him. Threw a breaking ball on Bradley. Singles in the right field. That's his 38th RBI. A pitch that was down, really the only place he could go down and get. Singles in the right field, and now they've got some speed on first base in the tying run. Chris Young got it started for the Red Sox as he homered with one out in the eighth inning. That was the first Boston hit of the afternoon. Jackie Bradley four for four in steals. Base hit to left. 
Saunders getting over trying to cut it off. They'll stop Bradley at second. And the tying runs in scoring position. So Chris Young, a home run and a base hit in his last two at bats. We've seen two pitches. It was happening right away. Michael Saunders, you can see he's deep. He doesn't want to get this ball, get by him for extra bases. Cuts it off and he stops Jackie Bradley Jr. at second base. So now it'll be a pinch hitter. Batting for the catcher, Christian Vasquez. Marco Hernandez. Hernandez is 0 for 2 against Osuna, and he is a free swinger. First pitch hitting. Takes one downstairs. That one a little bit harder at 98. What's difficult now for the outfielders, if there's a base hit, it's been raining now for about an inning, and that ball will be wet. It could scoot on that wet turf also. Two balls and no strikes. Things are never easy at Fenway Park. Mookie Betts on deck. Now three and one. He's got to take two pitches, doesn't he? You would think. You would think against Osuna. But if you send him up there as a pinch hitter, I think you want to let him hit. I think they'll let him swing. Let him swing away. There's two outs. You can't really tie his hands in this situation. You got to let him swing. He was swinging. Well now it's a full count and this really puts pressure on the Blue Jays defense. Bradley from second he'll be off on the pitch young from first he too will be running. Bradley represents the tying run. Young at first is the winning run. It also puts a little pressure on the infield. You mentioned the grass being a little bit wet. There's no easy play in the middle of the diamond. If there's a ground ball we're going to have to make that throw across the diamond to first base. Three and two. Fouled off. We'll do it again. The rubber match of this three game series comes down to the final strike. Typical Boston Blue Jay baseball. Back and forth and back and forth. A lot of one run games. We're soon to trying to figure out how to get Hernandez out. Time is called. Hernandez trying to wipe the rain off his back. Got him. That's the ball game. The Blue Jays win the series. That's five straight series wins for the Blue Jays, and they cut the Red Sox lead over them to two and a half games. And it was. A nail biter right down to the end like they normally are here at Fenway Park. Marco Estrada was outstanding. The Blue Jays big bats come through but Roberto, Roberto Osuna has to do it one more time striking out a runner or a batter with a couple of runners on base and the Blue Jays take a big series on the road against the Boston Red Sox. The Blue Jays finish up their 12 games against the Yankees and the Red Sox nine and three. We'll see you tomorrow night from Detroit. Stay tuned. Here's Jamie and Greg.